Ah, oh, it's you two again. I must say, you look a bit pale. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? Uh, a little. Perhaps if you had less on your mind, you'd be able to absolve yourself of such troubles. So what are you planning to do now? Catch up on some sleep? Or should I give you some time to rack your brain for a topic to discuss before I ask any questions? Although I must profess to being curious. Without child here, how do you plan on distracting me? Us? Distract you? <laughs> A g good one. But no, um, we were just here for a chat. Hmm. Looks like you could have used some extra time to think. No matter. If you don't have any other plans, why don't you accompany me somewhere? Don't worry. I'll be sure to steer clear of any scheming children. <sighs> the ocean breeze is sure nice today. Children always think they can hide things from the grown-ups. But nothing gets past me. Least of all a little scheming. I think I'll let them have at it for a little longer. I can be very patient. Well, I'll leave you to think things over. If you're so inclined, meet me outside the Palais Mermonia. Good things come to children who do as they're told. So I do hope you decide to tag along. If only for your friends' sakes. What should we do? She clearly knows about everything we've been doing, and Paimon doesn't think it'd be a stretch to say she was threatening us just now. idea. Hopefully he sees it in time. Well, we should probably head to the Palais Marmonia. Paimon doesn't want to find out what happens if we don't show up. Based on what the Knave was saying just now, it sure didn't seem like it'd be anything good. Okay, then we probably shouldn't keep her waiting. It seems like Linny and the others are on thin ice, so let's do our best to not get them in any more trouble. Seeing as we still have some time before my meeting, we might as well enjoy some pleasant conversation while we wait. I'm glad to see you get along with my children. Being surrounded by good companions is necessary for a child's development. You're not planning on doing anything to them, are you? I assume you're referring to Lenny, Lynette, and Fremine. Although, there's that situation with Filial and Nentoy as well. Hmm. It appears quite a few people have been acting out lately. No matter. I'm not one to discriminate. All those who betray the house meet the same fate. There are no exceptions. Does that mean you're going to kill them? Oh. Are you here to beg for their lives? I'm sorry to disappoint, but the rules of the house change for no one. In my organization, everyone is responsible for their own actions. Don't you care about them at all? They really respect you! They even call you father! You must feel something for them! Any organization in which feelings come before principles is one destined for ruin. The House of the Hearth is hardly an exception. 
You could say our principles are more stringent than most. Perhaps I can offer you this consolation at least. As our guests, you two will not be held accountable along with them. I would imagine Linny Lynette and Fremenet will be able to keep their lives. As for Filial, Nantoy, and the others, I'm afraid there's little I can do. They can try to escape, but once you know our secrets, there's no getting out alive. But... but that's... that's... that's awful! Ah, you seem concerned. Out of consideration for my guests, I suppose I could turn a blind eye for a little longer. If Linny and the others manage to dispose of Claire V in the meantime, all evidence of their wrongdoing will be lost. In that case, I could hardly punish them for something I couldn't prove. If their efforts are unsuccessful, on the other hand, all will be held accountable. And the punishment will be severe. Of course. Oh, and here. I believe this belongs to you. Do try and keep better track of it next time. It takes a considerable amount of time to train a bird like this. It would be such a pity if you were to lose it. Permanently. Wait, where did you get that? Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have to chat. Now, for the matter at hand. I asked you to meet me here because I have business at the Palais Mermonia. It has nothing to do with you, but I think it would be prudent for you to stick by my side for the time being. There will always be time later to run off and tell Linny what you've learned. Well, time to go. Looks like we wrapped things up just in time. It's been a while, Monsieur Nervalet. I must say, I wasn't expecting my meeting request to be approved quite so quickly. The Palais Mermonia operates with an efficiency worthy of admiration. It is only right that an esteemed diplomat such as yourself should be afforded the proper level of respect. Although, if I may speak plainly, I must confess that I did not anticipate we would have the occasion to meet again after presenting you with the Gnosis. I see you've brought the Traveler and Paimon with you as well. If I may inquire as to the purpose of your visit. I'll be departing Fontaine shortly. There is, however, an outstanding matter that I would like to see resolved before I go. It requires a rather lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. So I took the liberty of explaining everything in this proposal. Please review it at your leisure, Monsieur Nervalette. Hmm. I understand your request. However, at the risk of causing offense, I must admit that I fail to see why you would wish for such a thing. I heard you have a certain fondness for water-tasting, Monsieur Nervalet, so allow me to use water as an analogy. A family is like a large body of water with countless rivers flowing in and out. As someone who watches over this system, I would hope that each river that flows from the source will eventually reach the ocean. Of course, objectively speaking, I know this is impossible. Most of the rivers will dry up along the way, disappearing into the ground and leaving nothing but a barren riverbed behind. Not all rivers are destined to reach the ocean, but I would not see their existence rendered meaningless. 
I believe the water that flows within them is simply meant for a different destination, like a field in need of irrigation. Or perhaps the glass of a certain water-tasting enthusiast. Um, did you get any of that, Traveler? Your words paint an optimistic picture indeed. Allow me to remind you, however, few among us are willing to sip from a glass filled with tainted water. It may have been tainted at one point in time, but not to worry. I'll make sure it's drained of all impurities and returned to its cleanest form. Hmm. I seem to recall there being a transactional aspect to your proposal. Perhaps you could expound on that? If you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nevelet, I will gradually withdraw my forces from Fontaine. And, unless absolutely necessary, I will no longer carry out any special missions within Fontaine. I presume I can take your words to mean that, in the future, cases similar to the Tartuffe assassination will cease to cross my desk? Tartuffe? Ah, oh, that thief who embezzled funds from all those charities, you mean? My deepest condolences to his family, but without any evidence, I cannot imagine how the House of the Hearth might have been involved in his passing. Of course, if you accept my proposal, Monsieur Nervalet, I'm sure certain measures could be taken to reduce the frequency of such troubles. You choose your words carefully indeed. In that case, I am inclined to accept your proposal. My thanks for your generosity, Monsieur Nevelet. Well, with that settled, we should be going now. I took the liberty of bringing along two bottles of spring water from Snezhnaya for you to enjoy. I do hope I get the chance to hear your impressions. Perhaps at our next meeting? Yes? Indeed. I trust you would not overlook your commitment in the meantime. All right, Traveler Paimon. Time to go. about back there. Paimon only heard you mention some rivers, a large body of water, and then some kind of irrigation scheme. You really want to know? I would imagine there might be more pressing concerns at the moment. <sighs> Winnie... Paimon really hopes everything's going okay. Recognize that look? You've got your dicky cap on, don't you, Traveler? Jeez, I'm so sorry. I was so focused on selling these papers, I wasn't looking where I was going. Well, let me make it up to you at least. Here, take this paper. On the house. Oh, you don't have to give us anything! Please, I want to. It's not like I'm short on supply. All the extras will be useless come tomorrow anyway. It's my fault, really. I was just trying to bring home some extra mora for the family, but I bit off more than I can chew. I haven't had many takers today, so I'm still swimming in papers. What's going on here? Uh, nothing much. Uh, I just ran into your friend here on accident. I should probably get going, actually, so... Hold on. Um, of course, I'm happy to compensate you with Mora, it's just... I don't have any on me at the moment. I'll take three papers. 
Here. Your payment. Oh! Thank you for your patronage. May the Archons bless you with good fortune. If only I had the chance to run into such generous customers every day. <laughs> I should probably just take on a smaller inventory though, right? I'm getting married soon, so sometimes it's hard to not get ahead of myself. Anyway, I should head out. Goodbye! Well, now that my affairs are settled, we should take the boat back to Poisson. We've even acquired some light reading to enjoy along the way. Actually, why don't we... Uh, stick around for a little longer? Uh, Paimon just realized how hungry she is. She can't head back to Poisson on an empty stomach. It appears you two are under the impression that delaying our return will somehow alter the situation in your favor. I'm sorry to ruin your fantasy, but your efforts are meaningless. That being said, I could be persuaded to give Linny some extra time. I just have one condition. If you agree to my request, I'll even answer some of your questions. You're quite curious about Claire V, are you not? And my relationship to her? Wait, why are you being so generous all of a sudden? You're not gonna ask us to do something bad, are you? You overestimate yourself. You don't have the talent for bad things. Uh, then what can you possibly... The most important consideration in a negotiation is that both sides receive something they want. Demands and threats only get you so far. Wonderful. Here it is. When the time comes, make the choice that you deem most appropriate in the situation, and lend your help to the House of the Hearth. Okay. Sounds normal enough. But what do you mean, when the time comes? When is that supposed to be? That is for you to decide. Then we have a deal. Follow me.